Um, in Australia, there has been a lot of discussion, as you know, and debate regarding halal authentication and standardization, and the science behind the halal processes. We are fortunate and honored to have Professor Winay Tullin from Thailand, who is ranked as the world's 16th most influential Muslim scientist in science and technology. He is the founding director of the Halal Center, Chulunkong University, Thailand, and he is also the president of the Thailand, Thailand Halal Assembly. He is a pioneer in his field and has done phenomenal work in halal science and research. And he has also received the highest royal honor, the King's Service Medal, the Dushti Mala. Dr. Dullan will be speaking today about Thailand's diamond halal, the science behind halal authentication. I warmly welcome and please give him a huge round of applause. He's joining us all the way from Thailand, Dr. Winay Tullin. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbin Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala arufil abiyah awal musaleen wa ala alihi wa salihi ajma'in. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, first of all, I would like to shukur to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving me a very good opportunity to participate to participate in this uh, conference. Uh, thank uh, to the organizing committee for inviting me uh, again to visit this country. Uh, my topic today is about the halal science and technology for backing up. Uh, for backing up the halal uh, authentication, uh, this is a uh, the experiences of uh, Thailand. Uh, I, I hope that uh, all of you uh, know <coughs> Thailand is uh, located in uh, the Southeast Asia, not so far from uh, this country. Okay, this is uh, Thailand. Uh, Thailand is uh, not different from uh, Australia. We have uh, Muslim as a minority among the vast majority of uh, Buddhists. Only 5.4 million of Muslim live uh, in harmony with the uh, Buddhists. We don't have any conflict, especially in races or in other kind of thing. Our conflict is about the way how we live. For example, like uh, food. Uh, the main problem is, is uh, to live among the huge food uh, product manufactured by non muslim without understanding Islamic uh, principle of, of halal and haram. And uh, at that point, uh, 20 years ago, I myself worked with the uh, only one equipment in order to protect the Muslim consumer experience. Uh, from the adulterated uh, haram in their food. <coughs> and then uh, we initiated the uh, halal laboratory in uh, Chulang Khan University. And uh, 10 years later, is, uh, the laboratory was uplifted to be the halal science center. And uh, uh, from uh, Malaysian uh, even, it was announced that, that this is the first halal signed institution in the world. I will give you some uh, very, very uh, common in the food industry. The food industry for the moment is very complicated. And that this is the complexity of the chemicals used in the industry. You, you see, this is the chemical. It's a product from the natural raw material. This is halal. That how they produce. The best way is a very cheap way by using bacterial uh, fermentation. You see, this is uh, also 
allowed. And before using a bacteria, they have to grow in the very good uh, algae media. This is also halal and uh, nourished by the protein hydrolysis from the soybean, also halal. What the problem? To digest this uh, protein to have a hydrolysis, they use enzyme from the pig. Uh, <clears throat> this is uh, the helpful, finally, it's a super hunt. And according to the new standard of the OIC that we call CMIC standard, uh, published in uh, 2011, the year 2011, that uh, this is uh, prohibited uh, for the use in the halal industry. How many, how many kind of uh, chemical uh, like like this? One hundred eighty-six chemicals use this system. One hundred eighty-six and produce finally is more than thousand of the food products. You see, uh, this kind of uh, complexity. Then we need the scientists to work closely together with the ulama. <laughs> You know, according to Islam, if the ulama don't know, ask the one who know. Fasadu Allah zikliin kuntum wa ta'lamun. If you don't know, ask the one who know. Who will know that? The scientists and must be Muslim. And that it means that the Muslim society have to produce. This is a fardu kifaya for the society to produce. The scientists who know. And in Thailand, we finally take care of that uh, responsibility. And uh, this is a theological halal authentication. You see, then, uh, for the halal authentication, is uh, for ensuring halal integrity with the secure and protect Muslim consumer belief. <coughs> and as uh, we all know, Ya Yohanas Gulumima feel out the halal and toyib, but it's not only halal, also toyib. Good, safe, and uh, and uh, I, I, I said that spiritually good. According to the Islamic Organization Administration Act in Thailand, 1997, in Thailand, the soul organization who have the authority to certify halal as the Central Islamic Council of Thailand or Saikot. They perform by Kodi, the Kodi theological judge who have to be approved by Majlis of Ulana. This is in Thailand. We have the Act 1997 and we give all fa facility and all authority to the Central Islamic Council of Thailand. <coughs> and uh, in this principle scientific information for Masjid of Ulama judgment prepared by Muslim scientists of the Halal Science Center working closely with the Halal Center Institute of Thailand. We lucky enough we have the director of the Halal Center Institute of Thailand, Dr. Pakron Biakon with us today under the concept that this is the concept that we use in Thailand, the religion certifies Allah science support and we also have the concept of the Thailand diamond halal. <coughs> this is Thailand diamond halal. You see, for the moment, if you buy some product, what will you see in the product? The brand or the logo. I come to Australia. I, I don't know about the brand in Australia. I check from the logo whether it's safe to consume by Muslim. Do they have the halal logo? This is the way. And there's a plenty of logo. And uh, they have uh, some different quality. And then we have to find the good quality logo and it's backed up for us, it's backed up by ulama, judgment and together with the science and technology in order 
to clarify the authentication of the halal. In Thailand, this is the empirical integration of Sharia and uh, science in Thailand under the concept of the is uh, religion certifies halal science support. We work closely together between the ulama. The ulama have to go first. And the scientists work together with them, like uh, in the uh, operation room. The ulama like a surgeon, and the scientists like a nurse. We never work before the ulama. We have to assist. And the Halal Standard Institute of Thailand under SciCon work closely with the Halal Science Center at the Jolangkot University. And uh, the process that we have to work together is about the halalization. Halalization is about the halal standard. We need the standard. And the Thailand has the halal standard and the issue by the Ministry of uh, Agriculture, together with the Saikot Central Islamic Council of Thailand, and uh, done by the Halal Standard Institute of Thailand. And not only the standard, uh, the standard is only the paper, but how to implement the standard for the worker, mainly they are not Muslim, to work properly in the factory. We need standardization. This is the process. This is the procedure for the worker to work appropriately in the factory. And we have uh, to train them. And this is, uh, we developed the system that we call Health Q system by the Halal Science Center. You see, this is the role of the scientists to work closely with the ulama throughout the supply chain from the raw material until to the hand of the consumer we have the uh, the, the procedure to prepare the raw material this is the most important to prepare the raw material and uh, the try to find the replacement for the ingredients and that is uh, for the raw material and also the system in the factory, and this is the product. And also for the logistics, we have the halal logistics. We have to uh, also to perform the appropriate uh, halal logistics system until to the, to the hand of the consumer. Then we have the uh, zero uh, system throughout the halal supply chain. And uh, this is a halal forensic science. Why <coughs> forensics? It's not only the laboratory. We need also the other procedure to work closely with the uh, scientific procedure. You see, this is uh, the product uh, from uh, the supply chain. Go to the halal science laboratory analysis. And then before that we have to check with the document and also interview for the witness. You see, we have to work closely together. It's like a forensic procedure in order to assure the halalness of the product or raw material. And then this is the equipment at the Halal Science Center. There are more than 200 science, uh, state-of-the-art equipment equipped in the laboratory. 2,000 square meters at the Jolalongkorn University. I would like to invite all of you to visit us one day. And uh, our lab is uh, certified for the ISO IC uh, 17025. And this is uh, <clears throat> the the methodology that uh, we supply for uh, so give our service to the Islamic organization, also to the manufacturers, as well as the consumer. Alcohol by gas, liquid, chromatography, fatty acid, by several technique, porcine, gelatin, collagen, by LCSI, volatile substance, by enos, porcine, 
Thank you, Shrine Mono, Key Shrine by STIR, Heavy Metal by ICP, and then on PNA by Real Time PCR, and now we develop the new technique. We use the PGM. Instead of analyzing 10,000 as they use in the conventional laboratory, we increase the base pair to 3 billion base pair to analyze. And uh, for sine protein by LCT, uh, triple, triple port uh, mass spectrometer, <coughs> this is uh, we work closely with the National University of Singapore. We develop the technique together and also hormone. This is uh, we got the award from uh, Malaysia that uh, finally we, we, we have the technique to check the stress of the animal before slaughtering. And uh, this is uh, from uh, 2004 until uh, 2014. We analyzed altogether 86,000 analysis for the raw material and food. This is a huge work. You see, for DNA, gelatin, ethanol, fatty acid, and so on. And this is a very important. Could you give me a book? <coughs> the big problem for the for the food halal food industry is about the chemicals, about the raw material. As uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Shadi said, halal clear, halal bai Haram and Baijin. And, but between and more and more is increased, it's a Mustabi hut. It's a, it's a doubtful, a plenty of uh, doubtful chemicals available in the market. And we have to make it clear whether it's halal or haram. And finally, we have to analyze all. Uh, actually, we work closely with uh, uh, some university in uh, Malaysia and uh, Pakistan. And uh, this is the way that uh, we analyze for the doubtful uh, chemicals. Until finally, we change the number. You see, uh, actually, they use uh, IUS, IUS, International Unit of, of uh, Number, or E number, as you may know. And then we use the system, our system we call ICRO. ICRO, identification of the curing raw material for, for assuring halalness. ICRO. And change from E number to H number. And we have the book. We have the book. All uh, more than 400. Uh, 400 uh, chemicals. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, inside the book. You see, we change. If finally we found the halalness of the, if we approve the halalness, then finally we change from E number to H number. And the H number may be something dif different that uh, finally in the blanket, you see the E number and H number, and in the blanket the name of the company because the same uh, chemical is maybe it's halal, or it may may not. You see, and then we have to clarify the the name of the company who produce the chemicals. This is the halal ingredient list. This is the work that we have done uh, in Thailand. And then for the system of the how Q, how Q is, is uh, the, the system of the stand, halal standardization. I, I will not explain, but uh, this is uh, like the ISO system. You see, there are four systems. Uh, finally, we have to eliminate all. We have the quarantine, quarantine the haram. Very easy to produce halal. Eliminate the haram. The race is halal. Yeah, but we must have the way, and we call it the halal standardization. You see, finally, 
the food after half kill is ready for halal accreditation by Central Islamic Council of Thailand. We set up the system, but we never certify because we are not the Islamic organization. <coughs> we just instruct the worker to do. And then we request the certification from the Islamic organization. And this is implementation until now. 200, uh, now we have more than 500 and more than 150,000 employees working under our project throughout Thailand. And uh, this is uh, we publish the paper. You see, after the hal kill, no contamination found, zero. But with the certification, we still found some adulteration. You see, without uh, scientific backing up, then uh, you still find time to time the adulteration of the haram. And more importantly, it's about the how to clean the factory, the equipment, utensil. Because if uh, contaminated by Najis Mughalada, Najis, uh, or we, we call the severe Najis, like uh, dog saliva or uh, pig uh, ingredient, we need, according to uh, Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the clay, the clay, and uh, how to use, because uh, the industry is not accept to use the clay, and then finally we produce the soap from the clay, and then uh, we use uh, eight kind of clay, only natural clay, clay, to be development of the clay liquid detergent for Islamic cleansing and stability study. And uh, this is uh, published in the International Journal of the Cosmetic Science, <laughs> one of the best journal in cosmetic. This is in uh, 2009, and then now we have uh, many kind of uh, uh, cosmetic product and also soap. It's not uh, really chemical soap, it's a clay, but there's no, nothing different from the, from the soap. Can clean even better, kill more bacteria. And this is innovation, we need the innovation for the nutraceutical. We have the Sunna snack. At the Halal Science Center, we put the black seed or hapatu sauda in the snack. You see, this is a, some kind of uh, our nutraceutical product. And then this is uh, for the cosme, uh, cosmeceuticals. We produce anti acne cream and also sunscreen, uh, altogether eight products, and already registered and available in the market in Thailand. This is a sun protection cosmetic product containing 0.5% of the Habitu Sauda oil to 30% higher sun protecting factor value compared to others. This, this is a miracle of a, some herb that mentioned in Hadith and Sunnah. It's about the Habitu Sauda. You may know that it's a, we call black seed. And now, uh, information technology for halal integrated, uh, integrated. and uh, this is uh, we use uh, some kind of IT, you see, and uh, we have uh, all in order to facilitate the work of the stakeholder for the halal business. And then I uh, have no opportunity to show you, but uh, would like to, okay. Welcome you all to the Halal Science Center. Wow. 
Given the fact that, um, that there are, I think you mentioned there was eight percent of uh, population in Thailand is Muslim, um, do, do the funding arrangements uh, around private or government? Uh, the funding from uh, several sources are from the government, mainly from the university. Chulam University is considered among uh, two hundred based university according to the QS, QS uh, standard. And uh, we have a very good support from the, from the university and also from the government. And uh, we work closely with the Islamic organization and also have uh, some uh, sponsorship from the, from the, from the private uh, sector. And uh, the main uh, equipment is from the from the government because they consider that uh, halal is not only for the consumer; it also they uh, give the benefit to the country because uh, Thailand is one of the biggest uh, food producing country, and this is for the export and also for the for the. Uh, visit of the Muslim uh, traveler from other country and also from the Muslim uh, patient because uh, Thailand is also considered as the, the good place for the halal medicine. 
It's about the hospitalization in the country. And then uh, there are plenty of uh, patients from the Middle East come to Thailand. And then we need the uh, halal um, medicine <coughs> and also halal food provide, provided in the hospital. The, the, this is uh, the benefit of the halal that uh, the government uh, consider the significant allow for supporting the economy of the country. Thank you, Dr. Allen. We have a question. Yeah. Welcome to Australia, Dr. Allen. Um, I've got a couple of questions. Um, how do you <coughs> track and police all the businesses that they are following the processes, halal processes, properly? For instance, the butchers who supply a large chicken meat. Is there, are there inspectors in Thailand who go around doing regular audits? That's my first question. And secondly, for mass production of supply of poultry, for instance, and chicken, here in Australia, we have companies that have machine-based or certified processes where a machine slaughters, let's say, chicken and supplies them with a halal stamp. Um, do you have that in Thailand? So the two questions are, how do you control yeah. and, and, and make sure yeah. that Thank people you. and businesses don't just take a stamp and put it off. Thanks. Yes. yes. Uh, halal Science Center is uh, not uh, in charge for the halal certification. We work with the Islamic organization. Uh, in the Islamic organization, they are all together. Uh, Saikot, Central Islamic Council of Thailand, there are 39 offices throughout the country with the 700 at least inspector work. Uh, I think uh, Thailand is uh, quite huge for the halal uh, food industry. Then uh, more than uh, 30,000 uh, food manufacturers uh, uh, in the country. Then uh, there's plenty of uh, uh, Islamic uh, inspector take care of uh, for the halal uh, certification. Then uh, we just uh, instruct the advisor, Islamic advisor, and also the inspector to send some sample. And then uh, some uh, <laughs> some uh, manufacturer they need the halal certification, and also they need the halal uh, standardization system. And then. Uh, the Halal Science Center work closely with the uh, Halal Standard Institute of Thailand. Then we have the course for the for training the Halal Inspector and the uh, Investigator for the Halal Certification. This is we work together, and it's not the uh, the responsibility for the Halal Science Center. You see, we work with them with the Halal. Uh, organi uh, authorities in the Islamic organization. That the first, that uh, my qu uh, my my answer to the, to your first question. Uh, for the second is about the elect uh, electric uh, slaughter. In Thailand, we just hand manual. We don't have. We don't have the uh, mechanical uh, slaughter machine. And we don't use, and we don't. Uh, our, our our standard. Uh, we use only manual without stunning, without stunning. Just only in uh, some uh, <coughs> some uh, some case that uh, may, maybe is uh, allowed by the. Uh, importing country, then we accept. But in some condition, it means that the uh, the manufacturer or, or the abattoir uh, will not have the <coughs> courage, man, courage or 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 allow allowance to have the stunning uh, machine. You see, in Thailand, we don't, uh, mainly we don't have. But 
just in some case it depends on the bilateral bilateral benefit between the import and uh, exporter there if uh, they allow to have the the stunning procedure then we accept but mainly we don't accept uh, you, you, you understand uh, maybe some uh, something that uh, I calling to our standard we don't use the stunning process and uh, for for the electronic uh, equipment uh, like a uh, uh, electric uh, slaughter we don't use it in, in any but to in Thailand just a final question. We are running late behind the schedule, so we have a final question down the back. <coughs> Sorry, so we are running late behind the schedule. We will try to accommodate. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair, brother, uh, professor. Mashallah, beautiful speech and very informative. There's a lot, lot of questions, but we don't have time now. But one of the main questions uh, we'd like to ask the brothers here that do you. Uh, what do you the certification body with your standards in Australia? That's one question. Another question, if we want to access some of the information that you guys provide in university, how we can access that? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I, I think your question will be answered properly by <coughs> Dr. Papon Piyakon in the afternoon session. It's okay? Okay, it's about the uh, about the standard and the procedure. I, I think uh, Dr. Papad Priyakar will provide you uh, more information. Yeah, we do have and Dr. Um, uh, Papad Priyakar who is going to speak next. Uh, so we can have uh, ex uh, another question, um, and then we'll break for more no, debate. We, <coughs> oh, okay. we have we have one question. Oh, just very quickly, but otherwise I can ask later if you are running out of time. Very quickly, that just. When, when you say that you are satisfied with one of the products, say for example, so, how does it compete price-wise in the market? Uh, the price. Uh, yeah, you, you know, there are business people, finally they add uh, the cost for the halal certification in their product, as you may know. In Thailand, very cheap for the halal certification. In Thailand, two year, ten thousand baht is ten, maybe it's all three hundred Australian dollar for two year for halal certification in Thailand. That very cheap, and then it's not uh, affect to the price of the product. Then it uh, can compete with the other available product in the market. Thank you.